Hello everyone. Superstitions. We all have them. Whether it's putting on a pair of lucky socks before an important presentation, always being the green color in a game of Risk, or wearing a team's jersey in hopes that they'll win. These behaviors are completely irrational and, for the most part, we know it. So why exactly do we continue to hold on to these superstitions and perform various rituals if they seem so ridiculous? To understand this further, we must look at what some researchers believe to be the underlying cause of superstitious behavior, operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is when the outcome of an organism's behavior determines whether that organism will do that behavior again in the future. Essentially, if a behavior leads to good outcomes, it will be more likely to be repeated than if it leads to bad outcomes. Common sense, right? I mean, you probably wouldn't put your hand on a hot stove again if you've been burned in the past. B.F. Skinner, a famous psychologist, was one of the first to study operant conditioning with the Skinner box. The Skinner box was a controlled chamber where small animals could be tested and researched for operant behavior experiments. Here's an example of how the box was used. An untrained rat would be put into the box where there was a lever on one of the walls. Walls. The rat would then figure out just by interacting with the box that pulling a lever would give it food. The rat then learned all by itself that whenever it would pull the lever, food would appear, which is obviously a good outcome. So in this example, the rat performs an action that causes something good to happen. But what if the rat's actions had no direct control on the outcome, but the rat was still led to believe that what it did caused something good to happen? In a 1948 study, Skinner performed his Skinner box task with several pigeons in separate chambers. He set the contraptions up so that the pigeons would be delivered food every every 15 seconds regardless of what they did to the box. After some time, he noticed that the birds were exhibiting strange behaviors. Some were turning in counterclockwise circles, others were pecking at corners of the box, and a few were swinging their heads in a pendulum-like motion. The birds essentially attributed whatever they were doing at the time the food was delivered as the reason the food was delivered. Obviously this notion is false since the food was going to come no matter what, but the pigeons believed that it was something they did that caused it. The pigeons developed a superstition. It has been hypothesized that people, like pigeons, also make false connections between certain behaviors and events. You might forget to tie your shoes on the same day you had the best interview of your life. Now you never tie your shoes before interviews in fear that they won't go well if you do. Maybe you get a watch for your birthday and wear it to class the same day as a big test. You don't normally do well on tests in that class, but on the day you wear that watch, you get 100%. Now you wear that watch during every test you take. Sports in particular have a lot of superstitions. Coaches might not change their underwear during a winning streak, athletes might rub a lucky rock before a game, and fans might sit on the same part of their couch every time they watch a game at home. Some researchers believe that despite human tendencies to fall for false causal relationships and superstitions, they know how ridiculous their beliefs are. These researchers believe that the uncertainty hypothesis plays a role in our superstitions. The uncertainty hypothesis states that when people lack control over a situation, they tend to try to find ways to control it. People know that wearing their team's jersey won't affect the game, but doing so makes them feel like they have some part to play in their victory. Under the uncertainty hypothesis, superstitions act as a sort of coping mechanism that can be used for reducing anxiety. One can see how superstitions themselves can have a little bit of a causal role in an event in this case. If you're about to go into a test and you realize you don't have your watch, you might psych yourself out and become anxious, which could lead to a bad performance on the test. Or if you aren't the green color in a game of risk, you might lose confidence in your decisions and end up making mistakes you would never make if you were in the right mindset. Despite having a reputation for being outlandish, superstitions are an integral part of the human experience. Operant conditioning is typically a useful learning mechanism for intelligent beings, and it's interesting to see how a simple false association can lead to peculiar behaviors. So next time you believe that you can't do that presentation without your lucky socks, think about what's going on in your brain. You're more capable than you think when you don't fall for non-causal relationships. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.